Thank you. Thank you for coming. I always want to give appreciation. Start everything I do with appreciation. You know, I'm just thankful for the moment, thankful for the gifts, you know, thankful for the tremendous amount of people that kept circulating through my life to make me better. So before I begin, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Appreciate you being here. Dominique's not here, I, you know, I, I you know, like giving her thanks, and KGLH for always giving me that forum. You know, it's amazing how things get started. You know, she was running around the park one day, and I didn't know who she was. I, believe it or not, I'm up at four every day, but I'm training people. I don't listen to radio. So I'm out at the park. So she's running one day, and I saw her coming up the hill, and she was limping. I'm like, you know, what's wrong with you? I'm like, you know, my knees bother me. I'm like, I, you might want to change your shoes. So I gave her a place to go to that I send my clients to. She went and got new shoes, started running, and the knees start, start feeling better. Later, she ended up introducing herself to me. I still didn't know who she was, and then maybe a month later, her asking me questions, she goes, I want to have you on my radio show. And that's how all this started. That was like three years ago. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you get thrust into something new, just, you know, you don't know. You don't know. What you have to do is be open and available to it. So I always like giving thanks to Dominique because she pulled me out of something that I, I didn't think I would be up for, radio, television, any of that. So I want to say thank you to her and KGLH for the forum. Beautiful lady that's in the back that, you, you know, that gets you signed in. You know, favorite person in the world. It's my wife, Yvette. Um, I had a, 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 a 50th birthday a couple of weeks ago. And what's well, amazing was that we met in college. I was 19, she was 18 years old. So for, to know someone over half your life, you don't really realize what kind of friendship and relationship you forge over time. You know, so I want to give thanks to her for just being there, supporting me, also giving me that kick to be great. But tonight, it's about a concept, and I see these young faces in here. I'm so glad you're here. Because tonight, the concept we're going to speak about is belief. Belief. And one thing about belief is that we go through our day exercising it and not really paying attention to it. The things that we believe in, that we don't believe in. And it's important, especially for young folks, glad that you're here, is to start developing your own concept of what you believe in. And what I mean by that is that if you look at the top of this sheet, there's all these different descriptions. You know, engage, choose, hold, now, belief, trust. But under it, belief, the definition says, trust, faith, or confidence in someone or something. And we see that definition and we think it's outside of us. That someone or something has to do with believing with something outside. That someone and something is you. Let's start there tonight. The belief, the trust, the confidence, the willingness, the faith, it has to come for you. It has to be a part of you. You have to trust you in these areas. You have to have confidence in yourself. If you don't have belief in what you're doing, it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. You know, we look for, we look for things to show us. Belief is the, the perfect thing. Like, I'm going to go do some things that are, that, you know, we don't talk about on a day-to-day -day basis, but I want us to just to be open and available to what I'm going to ask you to do tonight. It's going to be different. I'm going to ask you to, to move and act a little bit different after tonight. Now, before I go, now we got the definition of belief. I want you to take everything that we talk about tonight and relay belief into every aspect of who you are, your physical self, your mental self, and your spiritual self. Because if you don't have belief, if you're, you're here to get in shape. If I have an athlete that wants to run a 4 4 40, 
and I put him through the program and he's running those times, when it's time to run on his pro day, if he doesn't believe, it doesn't happen. So belief has to be a part of even the process of getting there. But it has to be in you. The more you believe, the more others around you believe that you can. And that creates a momentum. So every aspect of your life, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual, I want you to relate these concepts to that. Now following this on this sheet, it says Coach E's philosophy. Now I have to put this up because when I stand here and talk to you, I want you to know where I'm coming from in regards to how I view you and myself and the world around me. It says, I see us, humankind, as the most magnificent creation of the divine. We have the potential to freely choose and create through our thoughts, belief, and action. We're so great. We make the impossible possible. Stop for a moment and just relax and hear that. Young people. Hear that. Nothing can ever limit you. Ever. Your dreams, your dreams, they're as, they're as true as you believe in them. Your potential is unlimited. What we'll talk about today is how we do limit it. But I want, I want you to know from the way I see you see us, is that once we set our mindset upon whatever we've chosen, it's done. Here's a time frame of the year. We got the holidays. People walk around singing Christmas carols and stuff. I get it. I get it. We've all been caught up in that hype for quite some time. I get it, but if we look at the fundamental belief of what this time is about, what we do is far from really what the time frame is about. So how is it that we're not questioning these things to hopefully change, to move where our choices put us in a place that benefit us? I could do a history lesson and tell you all the things from, from Woolworth and Sears coming together in the early, what, early 30s to say, we're going to create a holiday season. They moved the date of Thanksgiving so they would extend the time frame between Thanksgiving and Christmas and so we could create a time frame where people go out and consume. You can look at every month of the year. There's something that they want you to do to go out and spend money about. Starting from New Year's, right? What's well, February? Valentine's Day. Then you got St. Patrick's Day. You got to go get your Easter suit. Then June is what? Uh, Mother's Day. No, yeah. May. May, is, May is Mother's Day. June is Father's Day. The 4th of July, we got to do something for end of August is back to school. You know, something every month. October, we got Halloween, we got Thanksgiving. Every month, we have to go out and spend something because somebody's telling us. Is that our belief? Are we willing to question what we believe in enough to stop and to make choices that's going to benefit us? That's what I'm asking us tonight. To believe in ourselves, to trust in ourselves enough to move and act upon what we feel feels right for us, not because someone's telling us. Do y'all hear me? Like I tell my SAT class, y'all smell me. <laughs> huh? So let's move forward in this with this simple mindset. Look, everything's going to talk about, that means that I'm the, I'm the ruler of my destiny. The belief I got to have has to start with me. I'm willing. I believe, are these ladies coming in here? I'm going to make some room for them. I'm the ruler of my destiny. Everything that, that I do will affect everything around me. 
I talked to my young brothers earlier, and I can see just how dynamic they are. I love it. And I asked them to tell me their grades. They said B's and C's. And when you hit, hit C, it's like hitting me in the ribs. Because I'm going to tell you, would y'all mind doing me a favor? Would you mind standing up for me? Turn around and look at your beautiful people. Do these brothers look average? Huh? Not at all. So what I was trying to tell them, on their transcripts, when you got a C, that person doesn't see this face. They see what's on that paper. C, average. Is that what you want the world to see you with, right? So anything your name is on, anything that's a part of you, has an equal to who you are. You're no longer going to accept being average. Your belief must change tonight. That you're not average. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right, come on, let's go then. <laughs> I hate to put them on the spot, but I do it. We the family. They don't know that I'm going to be, I'm going to be their backbone. They don't know that. They don't know that I'm relentless. I'm relentless. This young man to tell you, we had a, we had a nice little thing this weekend. He's going to let you know, I'm relentless. I believe in us. Look at this. It's, I, I put up, guess what? You can do it if you believe you can. How, how simple is that? You can do it if you believe you can. Everybody, right now, we're going to do an exercise at the end, but right now, I just want you to start contemplating on the part of your life right now that you want to make a move. Want to do better at? Change. It might could be finance. It could be relationship. It could be school. Could, whatever. Think about it. And know that you can have it if you believe you can have it. Is that a simple concept? Why is it so hard for us? Why is this hard? Got to believe in yourself. If you define yourself like I defined you in Coach E's philosophy, and if you think about whatever that thing is that you want to get done, that thing, and go, I'm that great, the belief is easy. That means you've got all the tools to get it done. You just got to move forward and act. Second component of this is everything is possible to the extent in which you believe. To the extent that you have faith and clarity of thought, things are possible or impossible in reality. Nothing is impossible. What, what, what that says to us, and this is where I want to do the meat of the talk today, is that Right now, we have self, we have conversations with ourselves all day long. All day long, we have conversations with ourselves. You've been calling the classroom to do a problem, you're like, I didn't study last night. Well, if they call me up there, I'm not going to be able to do it. That conversation with yourself produces something because those are thoughts. When you drive in the car, you stand on the bus stop. I remember standing on the bus stop in high school. My dad, my dad, when I found out I was going to school, I had to catch an hour and a half on the RTD to go to school and back. My dad took off a half a day of work to show me how to, which buses to catch, come back. And I remember sitting on that bus stop a many a nights dreaming of days like today. And what I mean by that is I was standing on that bus stop and I see the nice, pretty cars pass by. And I go, you know, one day, I'm going to be great. I don't know what. I don't know what I'm going to do. The self-talk that I had during that time motivated me. I had family members saying, you're too small to play football. You're too small? Why are you trying to play? I'm playing flag. You're too small to play flag? Then I, in high school, you're too small to play high school football? 
You're too small to go play in college. You're too small to play at pro. Every time they did that, those self-conversations were like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to prove myself wrong. Prove them wrong. Well, the conversations that we have 99% of the time do not define us in the greatest sense of self. The conversations we have always put doubt in us. What I want us to do tonight is start having the conversation with yourself and talk yourself up. I can. I can do this. I can go, I can drink six ounces of water every hour to get hydrated. I can eat fruits and vegetables. I can go out and walk three times a week, 30 minutes. I can do, I can study 45 minutes longer every day. Those are the conversations you gotta start having if you wanna make the change. Because the belief we're talking about, I'm not asking you to believe in something outside of you, I'm asking you to believe in you. Everyone, everyone, take, take a little moment. Take, it, take a moment right now and contemplate on that one little thing. That one thing that you know you can do. That you know you want to do. That you want to have. That you want to become. And see yourself doing it. And just tell yourself right now, not only that you can, you will. And every time you think a thought that's opposite to that, you stop it. You stop it and replace it with the conversation you're having right now and add more to it. I can and I will. I can and I will. And I, you know, I, I, I'm a spiritual man. I'm not going to, I don't I'll talk religion and those things because I think that all of them lead us to greatness. I'm not saying one less, greater, but, but I know one thing that the God that we pray to, that we keep looking up at, is walking around with you, inside of you. Inside of you. Never, ever, ever, ever leaving you. No matter what the circumstance, no matter how difficult, that power that you pray to is inside of you. Ask it to order your steps. Back to the definition of belief. Who did I say to believe in? Why do you think you want to believe in yourself? Because what's living inside of you? God. That's why it's so easy. Do you smell me? <laughs> Lee, do you smell me? You smell me, young man. Don't look for God to be standing in the clouds with some wings. And here, you know, the violins. Sit still and find that great feeling. And that's God. That's God telling you, you were born perfect. You were born, when you were born, I gave you everything you need to fulfill your purpose. And there's a purpose that's only you're here to fulfill. So don't look to someone else to compare yourself to. I made you so unique, there's no one ever coming to this plane of existence that's like you. So feel good about being you. Believe in you. Believe in your genius. Believe in your next steps. Because every time you doubt, all you got to do is sit still and where? Go where? Back inside and visit your truth. God. Y'all smell me. I don't know, y'all. I see, I, I, I don't know. You smell me? 
All right. My Joel, Jay said, hey, I smell you eat. Number three, it says, doubt and fear. I put fear up here as false evidence appearing real. Are the only enemies of your dreams and vision. Doubts and fears. I can't. I can't. Don't that drive you crazy? I can't. But how many times do we say that to ourselves? I can't. Man, I, I can't eat vegetables. <laughs> I can't get up at five in the morning. Coach, e, you at what time? I hear can't so many times. And I'm going, okay, well, what is it that you want? Don't doubt it. Don't fear. Look, fear is false evidence appearing real. Well, you know what fear really is? Fear is when you tell yourself a story, that self-conversation I talked about, you create a negative ending. You create a negative ending to the story. You do it. It ain't even happened yet. But you fear it because you go, you know what, if I get in front of them people and talk, I'm going to fall on my face or I'm going to. You create the negative ending to the story. It ain't even happened. If I take this chance on opening this business, I could lose everything. I'm going to probably lose everything. I'm not going to do it. Just think about it. I like going back in history, especially with young folks. You know, I, like, I love using Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, I don't know, he fascinated me. Because, you know, here's this man that was fourth generation slave. Four generations of, of slave bloodline in him. So the most of the people around him was engulfed with, with not only slave of the physical, but of the mental. But somehow he goes, I'm going to teach myself how to read. I'm supposed to be free. He taught himself how to read on a fence that he was supposed to paint. He'd write the letters on the fence and then paint over them. He could read better than the people that owned him. Just think about it. Think about where we're at right now and the opportunities we have in our life. The opportunities that our forefathers and mothers provided for us. And here's this man, really with no sign of supposed to being free, thinking freedom. And do it. That's belief. That's the belief that we got to tap into, family. Young people, that's the belief that we got to tap into. We, they love talking about the slave trade. That, I mean, I want you to understand, we were laying in the most horrible conditions. Can you imagine being on these oceans for weeks? sometimes months. And those men and women who stood on the shores of the Americas, they had to be some of the most mentally, not only mental, spiritually tough, physically tough people to exist. But guess what, family? This is what just hurt. Their blood that runs in them is circulating through our veins. That ain't left us. That's what's in us. Let's tap into that. I said, belief, that's someone, something, that's us. Going inside. We have examples of in our history of our, what's inside of us. We got examples of greatness, of success. Use that to catapult you, to have the self-conversations to be positive. Eliminate the doubt and fear. What are we afraid of? Having less? 
If you ain't got what you want right now, why would we fear? What are we fearing? What are we really fearing? What are we doubting? Try. Let's move forward. Let's attempt to move forward with our health and wellness through our own actions, through belief in it. The conversations we have with ourselves have to be positive. They have to be supportive of who we are, have to be supportive of the divine essence that made us who we are. It has to be equal to our greatness every day. Don't let a moment go where you stay consistently thinking about something negative. Remove your mind from there, place it on the positive, and believe. What beliefs are are those thoughts that we think consistently over time become beliefs. We have that power. Can we do it? Can we do it? Are we starting today? Number four, your belief is your only real limit. Ooh. Ooh. I love that. That just sent some through me right there. Because, you know, guess what? So if I believe in something I can get, if I believe I can get a quarter, I'll get a quarter. If I believe I can get a dollar, I can get a dollar. If I believe I can get a B instead of a C, I'll get a B. If I believe I can stay out of trouble, if I can be a, a model student, I'll be a model student. So everything you get is according to your beliefs. Remember, that's man-made. That's all on you. God made everything out of love and equal. In God's eyes, there's no difference between this chair and this building. In God's eyes, there's no difference between a quarter and a billion dollars. God created it all. There's no We create value. We create the limits through our belief. So we stop right now and believe anybody's going through some financial whatever, stop and going, you know what? I'm rich. I'm wealthy. And you believe it? You're rich, you're wealthy. And if you believe it enough to move forward and act, all the things that you need start coming into place. See, that's where we, we freeze. So like, we wanna, see, we wanna have it show up right now. I need that stack of money right now. I can believe it, I see it. Can you, can you see it here? Can you see it here and believe in it so much here that it shows up there? That's really what I'm asking you to do. It's to believe in it here, where this right here dictates because of your consistent thoughts. Consistent thoughts become beliefs. Because of that belief, it shows up. Am I, am I saying anything that's, does anybody have any questions? Anything, does that, does that bring any difficulty to us? So if we look at our health and wellness from a holistic standpoint, I want us to take on this concept of belief to also believe in the plan that you're going to have to, for your body to heal, for your body to be healthy, for your body to be strong. Health and well, wellness is encompassing of everything. You can't be physically healthy if you don't believe. There are, there are, I have a client, I had a client, she um, moved back to Tennessee with her family. But when she started with me, she was, she was full blown, HIV positive, full blown. And she came to me and she's like, you know, was first afraid of telling me. And I'm like, you know, well, I said, first of all, you're healthy. And she looked at me and she like started crying. She was, she, I said, you're healthy. She's like, just broke down. And I was like, what's wrong? 
Well, so many of the doctors, family, were worried about giving power to HIV than not to her. And all I wanted to do was give it to her. I don't know, but I know God will give you what you contemplate most about. So the body, I said, look, the body knows how to heal itself. If you give it proper nutrition, exercise, mindset, anything can happen. And what can happen comes down to what you focus on. It took us three years. It took us three years. But you know, when you do the testing to show the, the, the count that makes you eat, gone. Gone. And, and she, her family from Tennessee called me, and I was like, it wasn't me. Yeah, that was Jelan. That was her believing enough in the process and doing the work. See, you, if you had to believe, you've got to be willing to act. So everything that you're dealing with right now, whatever it is that I told you to contemplate about, be willing to act. Because as you move forward, as, let me tell you, it, it made me more educated. Because as she moved forward and got better, it made me research more myself. So I could help her. So we could both keep moving forward. So we both got better in this process. Are y'all ready? On the back of this sheet, this is the work you guys got tonight. It says, what do you believe, what do you believe about yourself? I want you to sit down tonight. You know, you can do it right now if you want. But I want you to write down the things that you believe about yourself. What is it you believe you can do? What is it that you believe? Do you believe you're strong? Do you believe you're weak? Do you be I do an exercise with the Magnificent Men. I have a youth program. And it's a program where these young brothers come together. And in the beginning, we do this. And the first time we did it, I'm telling these guys, these, these, and they were all between the ages, what, of 13 and 16, I believe. And literally, the first day, maybe four things they could list what they believed about themselves that was positive. The majority of things they listed were bad things. And I was like, where did you get, these, where did you get this definition of yourself from? You get it from television, from magazines. Some of the, one of the young men, from his dad. We have to be mindful of what we speak. Because if we don't mean it, don't say it. Those words can either build or destroy us, but they create the beliefs inside of us. And what we believe ourselves in ourselves is really going to de determine what we get out of this life. If you don't believe you're supposed to have nothing, you're not going to have anything. Why, why is it that we had incredible people, the in our history, that were able to do such magnificent things. Do you think they believed that they couldn't? And a lot of times we get thrust into our places. They say that Martin Luther King was at a meeting with, you know, his frat brothers. <laughs> they say he wasn't really the one, you know, with some other pastors and preachers that were actually leading the movement. And they heard that brother talk. And before you know it, he was the face of the civil rights movement. We don't know. Malcolm X, they said, I think Malcolm X said he wanted to be a, an attorney. He was a, an intelligent young brother. We don't know. But if you have a dream and you move forward, all the things that need to come into place will happen for you. But you first got to define yourself on a greater sense. That's all I'm asking us. I'm asking you, I'm asking myself to, def to define ourselves as healthy, intelligent, abundant, wealthy, prosperous people. 
Why can't we? Let's stop listening to what people are telling us and go inside and live from the place that God defined us as, unlimited. Can we do that? And I keep asking you, can we do it? Because I'm telling you, families, these things that are going to be inside of you are vibrational. They're going to start touching other people. You've got to be ready to communicate it and take people with you or leave them. Because it's back to belief. You have to be strong enough not to even argue your beliefs, but act on them. So tonight, sit down and define yourself. Secondly, ask yourself, why do you believe what you believe about yourself? I'm a hood. You see, my young brother always come up to me, man, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just a hood, man, I'm just a thug, man. Well, why do you believe that? Well, that's what, you know, that's what the homies call me. That's what, is that what you want to be, though? <laughs> no. Well, what do you want to be? Man, I want to go to college, man. I want to get a football scholarship. I want to, well, that's, what you, that's who you, what you call yourself? Dominique, she can, Dominique, you know the young man that was in my program. I won't call his name, but he spent, he spent a few years behind, prison, by, behind bars. Straight banger. Calls me with a week left on his sentence. Coach E, I want to I go, go to college. I want to play Division I football. And it was surprised him when I'm like, okay. You ready to work? There's no way in the world I'm going to doubt him. Because if he called and said it to me, that means it's done. Well, that young man this past May graduated from the University of Alabama, Birmingham with a degree in exercise science. He did the work. He had the vision. And I mean, I just kick his tail. I used to kick his tail. But those, those instances, what I would coach him, he defined himself as that college student, as that Division I football player. And he felt if this is what he needed to be that, that's what he did, and he became it, and he did it. Number three, just like I told my man, what are you willing to do? Ooh. Jay, what are you willing to do? What y'all willing to do? Huh? Y'all willing to y'all really willing to go get it? Huh? Are you willing? Earlier I was telling them about I have three young men in my program that came up just like them. They're on the Pro Bowl ballot to be a, all pro football players. All of them had their degrees. One of them, Brandon Meebain, plays defensive tackle for the Seattle Seahawks. Do degree from Cal Berkeley. Um, Kevin Burnett graduated from the University of Tennessee, plays with the Raiders right now. He has a, a master's, he has two degrees. He has an undergrad and master's, don't know what they are. Altramon Werner plays with the Tennessee Titans, had a degree from UCLA in applied mathematics. All of them came through just like this. Here they are performing at the highest level. But what I always like to tell these guys is celebrate, they're balanced. They were academics. They believed they could be all of it. So what are you willing to do? What are you willing to do to help yourself health-wise? Are you willing to put down the sugar, the fried foods, drink more water? Are you willing to get out and exercise? What are you willing to do? We want to ask for something and then wait on it. God don't want us to wait on it. God wants you to act. When you move forward, God tells me, okay, now they're moving, now I can start letting them know I'm with you. Can't sit and wait. The divine wants you to move towards what you want. 
If you're scattered, you get scattered. If you're doubtful, you get things that are doubtful in your life. If you're fearful, you get things that are fearful. If you trust, if you're confident, those are the things that show up in your life. The last piece on here, I want everybody, please, to do this. It says, what would you do if you knew it was possible? What is it the one thing that you do that no matter what, you knew it was possible? You know? Whatever it is, the sharing it, but if you, there was something, that one thing I asked you to think about earlier, what would you do? What, how do you answer that question? What would you do? Huh? I heard somebody say it, what? Start doing it. Oh, I think we visited, we, we made the whole journey. That belief, the, everything about this whole thing tonight was about you starting to do it. Because I'm telling you, it's possible. Everything we've talked about tonight is to lead us there. Because guess what? It says, what would you do if you knew it was possible? I'm letting you know it's possible. So do it. Do it. Do it. If it's you, from a nutrition standpoint, if it's you just eating more fruits and vegetables, if it's me saying more positive things to myself, if it's me getting out three, four times a week and walk, if it's me telling my, my partner, I love you. If it's me telling my child, you can do it. Look, the, thing, the problem that we have about this, this incredible life is that we think that we have to all have this purpose that we got to save the world. Everybody got to be Gandhi. Everybody got to be Martin Luther King. No. Your purpose can be, I, I always use the example of my mom and dad. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad worked in aerospace, off and on, laid off. But their purpose, they wanted to be great parents. Well, their four children have a program to help thousands of kids. So if my parents didn't fulfill their purpose, it, I wouldn't be here. So whatever it is, if it's you want to have more free time to spend with your child, that's a purpose, that's valid, but do it. Act on it. If you have a business idea, act on it. Tell people about it. A lot of times we don't tell people about the things we want to do because guess what, they'll ask us, how you doing on your, your business? And you're like, oh shoot, I ain't did nothing in three weeks. <laughs> you don't like telling people about it? Because they might call you on it. You know, I always tell my clients, be careful who you tell your dreams to. So you ain't got to tell it to everybody, but those people who, are, who love you, yeah, tell them. Because that's a great energy, and it can give you support. I have some, I have some incredible friends that tell me, I can't. That's a powerful thing for someone to tell you you can. But we got to do it. Y'all have any questions for me? Yes, ma'am. Well, for the magnificent men, we're going to, our first one meeting with it will be in January. But Saturday mornings, like tomorrow morning, we'll be at Doc Weiler Beach at 8.30 every Saturday. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
you know, ages um, seven years all the way up through college. But if they can handle it, very little ones, I take them. My daughter used to be four years old, and when she get tired, she just goes down to the side. If they want to participate, I, I welcome them. And, it, and it's, it's about performance, the program. It's about performance. But I want you to understand what I mean by performance. I want them to do their best. Everybody ain't going to be in the NFL. Everybody ain't going to get a scholarship, but they can go to school. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Small. When the Miami Dolphin Scout came to me, I went to a Division III college. You don't get, you don't get recruited out of Division III schools. He stood, I was on the scale, he put his hand around my neck like this, and he goes, you're 169 pounds, 5'9", 169 pounds. He's like, what are you, why are you trying to play football? I told him, because I, I love it. And I know I can play. And that alone showed him something. And I bugged him. The next time he ran me, he was a professor at LACC. He marked off 40 yards on the side of the building. When I finally ran my 4-4 for him, I bugged him. I believed I can. And that's what it, I think that's what I attach to with these young people. Yes, sir. I tried with the Miami Dolphins, and then with the Seattle Seahawks, and the Green Bay Packers. It was my last attempt at playing. And, and the Green Bay Packers guy, let me tell you, I had a, a knee injury, and I started working for Security Pacific Bank. And working all day, and my dad calls me and said, the Green Bay Packers guy want to give you a run today. This is five years in. Rehab, the whole thing. I went out there and I ran the slowest 40 I've ever run in my life. He said, nope, son. He said, tomorrow morning I'll be in New Orleans. And in that moment is when I said it was over. And my dad told me something. We were walking up the hill out of Southwest College. And he says, he says now you'll find out what you're here to do. Because you think it's in sport. I thought that's where I was going to find my greatest self in. After that, I started, I founded my youth program, and my wife and I started tutoring kids, and since then we've sent over 5,000 kids to college. And, and nobody knows me as a football player. You know what I'm saying? I can speak to the experience, but I never got to be on that commercial and be Bo Nose and, and RG3s and the Got a chance to taste it. And that's what I can identify with you with. But the bottom line is our greatest selves are going to, fulfilling, fulfilling purpose comes in all different ways, shapes, and forms. Anything else? Any other questions? Coach, yes, sir. When you played football, at that height and that weight, what did you play? Three I played wide receiver. I was a wide out. Wide out. But let me tell you something about it. 5'9", 169 was at track season, right? He had faith enough in me to give me a shot. By the time season came around, I grew an inch, and it was 181 pounds. I started lifting weights and started doing in a moment's time. You don't know. That's why I said you have to have the faith to work, to do it. My dad brought me home a truck tire with a rim in it with a rope and harness through it, and a strap. Y'all remember the 105 freeway, right? Before it was built. Devil's Dips. Yeah. Motocross trail. We lived on Imperial Highway. My dad would take me across the street, and it was a hill about 125 yards. I said, drag that tire up that hill 20 times, and then he'd take me to the field, and I'd catch the ball. That's what got me there. That act, you gotta move, you gotta act. Anything else, family? No. What, what? <laughs> I heard a dad say, I'm gonna get him a tire. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, 
That's all right. I got some for me. What, what he had, what my dad made for me, I have now. It's, it's a sled. And I stack these 45-pound plates on them for the guys. And they drag it the same way. I use those same concepts. So, but family, we leave here tonight with a mission. And I want, I want you to do those simple exercises, but I want you to observe. Observe the commercials that come on TV. Observe the people in the community and how the tension in the air over something someone is telling us to do. I want us to relax. I want you to relax. Everybody don't need to have a Lexus with a bow in the, in the driveway at, at Christmas. He got it at Jared, you know, diamond ring. Y'all put pressure on everybody trying to get, you got your kids, you got lined up trying to get Xbox, three box, four, all them things. I understand it. I do, but don't go crazy over it. Come out of this the way you went in, with a plan, with the belief, moving forward towards something that benefits you. Can we do it? Yes. Family, I want to say, I, I want to uh, give ultimate appreciation to you. I thank you for tonight. I thank you for helping me on my journey. We're on it together. As I'm talking to you, I reinforce stuff that I got to do myself. Eliminating the doubt and the fear. We all have it. I'm not sitting up here telling you I got all the answers. I'm doing it. I'm in the same process with you. I will not lie to you. But what I am is willing to act. Can we do it, family? Let's make our health and wellness our priority. Let's do something. Let's choose. I, I know you have a formula for hydrating before you're supposed to play a game. Yes. Can, can you? Well, five hours before. Five hours before any strenuous activity for any young person, they should take in at least 32 ounces of water. It's a lot of water. But that's five hours, so it's going to get into their bloodstream. Then leading up, you want to take in between six to 12 ounces on the, in the hour. You're going to urinate a lot up before the game. But once the game starts playing and you start sweating, the body is going to take that water that's in your bloodstream and use that O, that oxygen, to supply you to keep your body performing at its highest level. So five hours before, so like a lot of guys do, like when professional guys, they get up in the middle of the night and drink the water. Get up in the middle of the night, drink the water, especially if you've got an early game. Go back to sleep. I know it makes you move. Then every hour, drink six to ten ounces up into the game. You'll be hydrated, play, won't cramp. Also, take in potassium, bananas, tomatoes, all right, it's good, and protein, some type of protein. If that's heavy on you, you don't, I didn't like eating heavy, so I would only eat fruit. But I'd be starving after the game. Family, I want to say thank you. My, my wife, Yvette, she, every um, night we do these healthy series, she brings um, a, a salad uh, that she created. It has kale, spinach, uh, cranberries, olives, red, bell pepper, um, uh, uh, some, some goodies. It's for you. Please get your cup. I have my book in the back for the holidays. If you want to buy, I have, they're, on, they're 10 bucks. So if you want to buy a book, 21 Days Ultimate Health and Wellness, um, I would sign it for you. Uh, I want to say thank you once again. You know, I use every time I end on the radio, I say peace and be more. I want to say peace and be more, but also God bless you. I mean, I want God to bless us. I do. So peace and be more. And God bless you. Have a great evening. Thank you.